Good morning, you listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Carl Buchart, who is the founder and a board member with Bolu of America. Carl, you doing okay today? Yes, sir. How are you doing, Kim? <laughs> I'm good. It's, I, I've had trouble tracking you down. I wanted to let the industry know why they haven't seen you out and about, as you usually are this time of year when Bolu is out launching new categories and products. You actually had a serious motocross accident on december the 13th didn't you yes sir we were out riding with uh, my boys uh, nicholas and stan and a couple of their buddies and beautiful uh, afternoon on uh, december the 13th and we were literally a minute away from uh, putting up the bikes and we took one last little trail through the woods and there was a few little jumps in that trail mm-hmm. and it's a narrow trail in the woods so obviously trees on both sides literally the last little jump my bike landed a little bit off angle and as I landed, I must have accelerated a little bit, and my bike swung around 180 degrees violently, you know, smashed me against the tree. You know, I got my lower left leg smashed between the motorcycle and the tree and basically destroyed my lower left leg. So I've been in a fight to save my leg ever since. I was 49 days in the hospital, two weeks in Atlanta, five weeks in Boston at uh, Brigham's and Women's Hospital. Basically, my leg is saved because that was for many, many weeks absolutely not clear. Now it's a matter of making sure it's going to be strong enough to be able to do what I need to do to be able to walk on it and then hopefully uh, ride my bicycle again and hopefully uh, later this year maybe even uh, get uh, on a horse again. Okay, I want to point out a couple of things. One is that uh, most people know, and actually I did an interview with you, I guess, three or four years ago. You were an Olympian equestrian, one of the oldest Olympians in the Olympics riding horses. Most people know you very, very physically fit. And, you know, I think if you'd been on a horse, that horse would have known better than to run into that tree, wouldn't it? (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's the advantage of a horse. At least a horse has some brains yeah. where a motorcycle doesn't. Do. That's right, yeah. Second thing I want to point out is that uh, the story I hear is, uh, despite the fact that this group of 20-somethings or that you were running around with were all out there with you, that you were actually out front. You were leading the group. I'm also not surprised to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how smart that is, but yeah. that was indeed the case. Well, and, and a little bit more detail about this. Immediately you had surgery. For a little while it's been touch and go, hadn't it? Yeah, well, here's what happened. The injury was an open tibia break. One of the pieces of tibia was stuck in the dirt, which is just as bad as it gets because, I mean, it is just an absolute disaster for present and future infection. The the biggest key before the orthopedics can start working on the broken bone is that the infection has to be under control. And there were all kinds of nasty cultures and bacteria that had to be gotten under control. And so I had to have overdose after overdose after overdose of antibiotics. I first went to Grady Trauma Center. Those people did a marvelous job. And so after having cleaned everything up, what they thought was sufficient to do the first flap transplant, what they do is they take a piece of skin and tissue off of a donor site of your body, which in my case was off of my right thigh. And then they transplant that to the damaged calf muscle, which was severely damaged, in addition to the broken bone. So they did that, and the operation was flawlessly executed. But then, unfortunately, after three and a half days, a major infection set in. We lost the flap in a matter of uh, minutes, basically. So, unfortunately, that big piece of meat from my right thigh, from my good leg, ended up uh, in the trash can. Then what they did is they put the leg in a wound vac, which is a vacuum wrapping, if you wish, with antibiotics and cleaning uh, solution in there. And every other day you go to a full-fledged operation in the operating room under full anesthesia and they do a big cleaning so that they keep the leg from infecting. A friend of mine who is a prominent plastic surgeon in Atlanta, his partner is friends with this world authority on plastic surgery and microvascular surgery and basically the king of the face transplants because of the nine face transplants that have happened in the United States to date. Seven of them happened under his leadership. So his name is Dr. Prebox. And so the idea was to move me to Brigham and Women's Hospital in in, uh, Boston, where Dr. Prebaz operates out of. When I got to Boston, they did another 
three cleaning operations before they were ready to take a, uh, an attempt to uh, do the second flap transplant, if you wish. This time, Dr. Prebas decided that he needed the biggest possible flap he can get on my body, so they decided to take the flap off my back. So they took a strip off my back, six inches wide by 11 inches long. They did that flap transplant on January the 4th, that went really, really well. They were very pleased with everything. The leg stayed clean of infection. My leg was stabilized and safe uh, so that, you know, it wouldn't have to be amputated, which was, you know, absolutely nip and tuck there for several weeks. They did the big orthopedic operation on January the 31st, and they put plate in my leg of about 10 inches, put the tibia bone on the plate. They were very happily surprised that there was no bone missing, which they were worried about that. Uh, so the tibia is touching, and it's fixed now on that plate with uh, several screws. So all that is now uh, stabilized. I'm now in uh, St. Louis for five weeks to do light rehab on the rest of my body because I can't do any weight-bearing on my injured leg yet. Right, well, ho hopefully things will continue to progress there. I know you've missed being out there and seeing all all your friends in the business. And, you know, it was interesting, too, just a quick comment, the BOU of America this year, you know, which just a couple of years ago was primarily a carpet company, has diversified its mix and is now in many different hard surface categories. So the business is continuing to evolve, uh, even in your absence, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we obviously have a new CEO uh, after uh, Ralph retired. Carl Verkruzen had been our CEO in uh, Canada for seven years, and he had uh, witnessed obviously the same exact uh, market dynamics in Canada. And he had introduced lots of hard surfaces at Beaulieu Canada with great, great, great success. Mm -hmm. So uh, when he came uh, over here and assumed both roles, CEO of Canada and the United States, he saw the urgent need of diversification and hard surfaces. So we did, and uh, we started out with uh, LVT, had a very successful program. Then we uh, joined forces with uh, U.S. Floors. Uh, on the Cortec program, yeah. which we've launched a very successful Cortec program. And now, you know, my son Stan has been uh, responsible of that, and he's been going back and forth to uh, China to uh, put these programs together, you know, in conjunction with the Canadian colleagues and in conjunction with a lot of outstanding people at Bully of America. Obviously, all these things are teamworks, and we've come up with a, with a, with a real good assortment of hard surfaces, and obviously we're uh, in the process of placing as many of those displays as we can, as quickly as we can, so that we depend less on residential carpets, which is clearly a category that continued to suffer mm -hmm. uh, and uh, looks like will continue to suffer for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. All right, Carl, it's great to talk to you, and I wish you the a fast recovery. I know uh, the people listening also would share that sentiment with me. It's, uh, again, been talking to Carl Buchart, the founder and a board member with Bull U of America. And you've been listening to Kempar and Flordelli.net.